As I'm sure you're all aware, Aston Martin has re-entered Formula 1 this year with this, the AMR21. And as I speak, the team's best result has been a stunning second place by a resurgent Sebastian Vettel in Baku. But arguably, Aston Martin had its biggest win of the year before the season had even started. You see, at the end of 2020, the contract to provide the safety car and the medical car was up. Now, Mercedes has provided that for, well, pretty much since time had begun. But Aston Martin snuck in there, and as a consequence, at half the races for this year, you will spot a Vantage doing safety car duties and a DBX doing medical car duties. That's a pretty big coup, because if you think about it, the only road cars that you actually ever see at an F1 race are the safety car and the medical car. And to celebrate all that, Aston Martin has now built this. This is the Aston Martin Vantage F1 edition, resplendent in a satin shade of the F1 car's green paint, with the broad stripe running from the vein grille to the new rear wing. And, as you can see, there are a couple of small badges with the official F1 logo. In here, well, it's basically the same as the AMR edition car, with these sort of lime green stitching and bits of leather sort of like here, and lots of Alcantara, which I love. There is, of course, an F1 badge inside as well. Perhaps surprisingly, this is not actually a limited edition car. Rather, it's the new £142,000 halo for the Vantage range. Even more intriguingly, Tobias Merz, Aston's new CEO, set the development team the challenge of making this car quicker on track, with a target of 7 minutes 30 around the Nordschleife, but without cheating. In other words, they weren't allowed to simply bolt on a stickier set of tyres like some courses or Cup 2s. There aren't big increases under the bonnet either, with the turbocharged 4-litre V8 only gaining 25 brake horsepower, taking it up to 520 bhp in total. Maximum torque stays exactly the same at 505 pounds foot, but that peak is sustained for longer. What we've got then are a lot of suspension changes. And again, it's quite detailed stuff, but the whole idea is to basically give it more lateral stiffness and more support, particularly at the rear. To this end, there are stiffer bump stops at the front with more rebound in the dampers, as well as half a degree more negative camber and a shear panel that has doubled in thickness. At the rear, the spring rate has gone up by 10% and the compression damping has been increased, while there is also a small lateral damper to help keep the transmission in check. The new aero helps provide 200 kilos more downforce than the standard car, and although the tyre's rubber compound is largely unchanged, there are now larger 21-inch forged wheels all round. The gear shifts, well, we've still got the ZF 8-speed auto in here, but the torque interruptions have actually been shortened. So, whereas before they sort of they might have given a few more pops and crackles, they might have been a bit more dynamic in some respects. Now they're just smoother, quicker. On the track, well, to be honest, I found that you want to go sort of straight through from sport through Sport Plus, just ignore that and go for track. Because although, yes, it is sort of pretty busy straight away, and this is quite a bumpy circuit this little stow circuit. It's quite tight, it's quite technical, it's quite testing really for any car, particularly a car that can sometimes maybe feel a bit heavy. But this car just gets better and better the harder you drive it. Through this corner here, so you're braking under brakes, you really feel it nice and precise, and then through this long corner, just balance it on the throttle. Of course, if you do want to be a complete hooligan, then <laughs> you can. Now, I think it's worth pausing to say that I did drive this car briefly on the road too. Out in the leafy lanes, the dampers are resolute enough that they need to be kept in the softest of their three settings. But although bumps and lumps are more keenly felt and you couldn't describe it as smooth, it isn't a crashy or jarring ride. Some of the compliance has also been taken out of the steering system to give a slightly more connected feel, which is pleasing. And the throttle response is livelier too. Definitely doesn't do relaxed in the same way as the standard car. Anyway, back to the track. I always have those images of the safety car and the medical car just in that lovely 
state of sort of four wheel drift, I suppose. Just constantly not over steering, not big smoky slides, but just that little sort of just moving across the circuit. And you really can do that in this. If you took it to a track day, obviously you can't go out and do big smoky skids everywhere, but there's just a precision in this that, because again, it's on not a sort of a really extreme tire, it's not a track tire, it's on still sort of a road compound despite the fact we've also got bigger wheels, but you can just place it more accurately and drive it on the throttle, but not overly leery if you don't want to. I love it through this chicane here, actually. Just balance it again. Use the throttle, really use the throttle in this car. Because yes, you can get it rotated, like I say, you don't want to overload the front end, you just want to drive it on the throttle almost quite an old school fashion I suppose. How close is it to the actual safety car? Well, that's got some more aero as it doesn't have to worry about pedestrian impact regs and it's also got an upgraded cooling package. But otherwise, it's apparently very similar. Guys, burnt my lander. I think I'll have a lot of fun. I'm trying to keep an F1 pack behind me. The only thing perhaps I'd like is, well, some different seats in here because I think with a car that's this good on track and actually you would want to take it on track I'd like some more aggressive bucket seats or at least the option of them for those that do want to use it on track so through the long tight left hand here just sometimes when you're sitting into the slide you, know, you don't have the precision of a mechanical limited slip diff I'm really impressed with the brakes though I'd say the precision under braking and the way you can place the car that is Really nice. What then to conclude about the Vantage F1 edition? Well, the changes certainly make it more enjoyable and accomplished on the track, and more engaging if a little less refined on the road. Things like the gearbox and seats, not forgetting the tyres of course, mean that it certainly isn't a full-blown 911 GT3 rival, and Aston certainly isn't pitching it as one. What is it then? A CS? A GTS maybe? Well, after a bit of pondering, I realised that it reminded me very much of the recipe for the N for Nürburgring cars that appeared in the old Vantage range. And that's no bad thing at all. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you haven't already, then do please think about subscribing as we're on a push for a million subscribers as soon as possible. And do share the film as well if you enjoyed it. All support is greatly appreciated.